Pour yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Russ Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it is Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast presented by DraftKings. Love me some DraftKings. Love the ridiculous deals they've got going on for college football and the NFL. Bet $1 on either sport. They give you $200 in free credit. Just make sure you use the code ROSS when you do so. That's me, by the way, Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman. Five teams, seven years. Most of you know that. You can hit me up on social media always at Ross Tucker NFL. Our podcast network handle is at Ross Tucker Pod. We absolutely love any email questions or social media questions you ever send our way. It means a great deal. We also love those of you that rate and review the show. So please do that. We believe that this is... Three podcasts in one. I literally tweeted that over the weekend at Raw Soccer NFL. It is a college football betting podcast. It's an NFL draft podcast, and it's a college football podcast. And if you follow along with Emory, you made some money last week. So very much looking forward to diving into this week's game. Emory, of course, is Emory Hunt at F Ball Game Plan on Twitter, Football Game Plan on YouTube, FootballGamePlan.com slash 2022 draft guide if you want to go ahead and just buy that so you don't have to worry about it you know you're getting the best draft guide when it comes out uh next winter february around when it comes out uh emory we got a couple games under our belt none of them were really that great other than nebraska illinois was at least somewhat competitive what a bad look for nebraska dude i mean they didn't just lose like they they didn't look good. They got run over a lot. They got beat up up front, Nebraska, and do stupid things. It's a bad look for the coach. Real bad look. And on the back end of it, you you, you do a good job defensively early on and stopping Illinois. You knock their quarterback out the game, but you let the backup come in who wasn't that good at Rutgers, and he had a career day. So a lot just went wrong from Nebraska last weekend. And they had the, their opportunities to win that game, but you saw three parts of the game. And again, every football game, it comes down to three plays. And I thought one of the major ones was a fumble by Martinez before half that went back for a touchdown. That changed the entire tide of the ball game because that right there, if they go in without that score, maybe Nebraska can figure things out, make some adjustments, and get back on track. But that it was just you know, you had a punt return, safety, and then you had this fumble. So that's nine punt points you just gave Illinois, um, and that's a big reason why you lost by eight. Absolutely brutal. Um, I, You know, they got a new athletic director there and Trev Alberts. I mean, they got to turn it around this year. Otherwise, this is year four for him. I, I don't know. I mean, that – that's a tough move to make if you're Trev Alberts, you're one of your first moves to fire like a Nebraska legend, but they got to be better. Like it's the first time Illinois has beat Nebraska in back-to-back years since 1923-24. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, we got uh, – any anything else jump out to you from this past weekend, Emory? Shout out to UTEP. Last, last year I had UTEP as a sleeper team, and offensively they were game. But defensively, they they fell down the back end of the of the of the game. Always gave up big plays in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they got better. They add the cornerback from Kansas State, and I think now we're going to see UTEP start to turn things around because offensively, you know, with their run game, they're going to be dynamic and big plays off the passing game. Rarely they throw, but it's because they run the ball so well. Um, but I'm excited to see how UTEP progresses. I think they could start. 2-0 because they got a, a game that they should win uh, this upcoming weekend. I got Holy Cross at UConn on Saturday, which is honestly like a really good opportunity for both teams. Like for UConn, uh, they did not look good against Fresno State. Now, I think Fresno State's pretty good. You know, Ronnie Rivers, they got some receivers. The open field tackling for UConn was just scary. Uh, but they actually had some open guys that they met. Like, they'd have, like, a wide-open guy. It would be a touchdown. The quarterback would throw it, like, five yards over his head. 
Uh, they need better at a lot of positions, but the reason why I say it's a good opportunity for both Emory is for UConn, it's a great opportunity to get a win. Like they, they just need to get a win under their belt, playing a Patriot League team in the FCS. For Holy Cross and their head coach, Bob Chesney, but it's a chance to get an FBS win. Like that, it, now I'll, I'll be curious. I don't, I don't know. I even look what the spread is, but you know, I think Holy Cross probably feels like they can compete with them, Emery. Absolutely. And when you watch Holy Cross play, I've done three Holy Cross games under Bob Chesney. You watch the offensive line and defensive line play. They are really good up front along the line of scrimmage, and they're going to pose a lot of the same issues. Uh, maybe not to the cert to the same extent that Fresno State did defensively. So expect a, a, an aggressive bunch, and they play great special teams. And that's one thing that's very underrated about Holy Cross. So I'm excited for that one. I have the Morgan State Towson game, uh, the battle for Greater Baltimore. So I'm excited for that one this weekend, and, and it's going to be fun because I'm a big Rob Ambrose guy, and I'm a big Tyrone Wheatley guy, and get to call that game once again. I did it three years ago when it was at Towson, and now it's at Morgan State. So I'm excited for that one as well. Oh, that's awesome, man. That is awesome. Uh, and you nailed it. You, you you laid the points with Fresno State, and you were right. Let's dive into it. And let's start with Arkansas and Rice. Uh, Rice is actually where uh, Christian McCaffrey's younger brother, Luke McCaffrey, is now at the former Nebraska quarterback who started against Penn State and beat him last year. Arkansas has got a quarterback that you wanted to discuss in K.J. Jefferson. Yeah, that's the guy that could make that jump into you know, who he, he came out of nowhere type type player, right? He's a big dude at 6'3", 245. Um, good touch on a deep ball, and we know that ties in perfectly with the next prospect in, in trail and Burks, the wide receiver. But you look at someone like Jefferson, he can run, he can throw, he's fearless in the pocket. He provides a little bit more consistency, I believe, than what they saw last year from Felipe Franks. So here's an opportunity for a guy – to really take hold of the position and make those strides that we saw a Trey Lance make or someone like that make in one season, Jefferson has a big time opportunity here. And that's why I'm excited to see how he, he plays this season. Uh, you mentioned Traylon Burks. Tell me about him. I, I like Traylon Burks, man. He could, he affects the game at all levels, you know, behind the line of scrimmage. If you want to, you know, utilize him in a, in a wide receiver run game or throw him those bubble screens, at the line of scrimmage, getting off the line, you know, with his releases, intermediate level of the field because he's fearless going across the middle and deep down the field because he does a great job of tracking the football. So he's a complete player. I see him as a first round talent and guys like that, that I, that I just feel are great football players uh, always will have a special place in, in, in my scouting because this guy definitely plays the game how you want it to be played and is always productive. For Rice, uh, they have a tight end that jumped out to you in Jordan Myers. He's good, man, in terms of being a move player. He's probably more along the lines of an H-back at the next level, but you see good effort at the line of scrimmage, in-line blocking, um, and that's all you really want from a tight end. You know, this is a guy that's willing to get in there and mix it up with a defensive lineman. You don't want them blocking that guy consistently, but if he has to, he shows that he's not afraid to do it. But when he has the ball in his hands, he's someone that can, you know, make guys miss. He's a good rack player, run after catch guy. So I think he has the upside uh, to be a solid H back option at the next level. Looking at the uh, spread on DraftKings, Arkansas is favored by 19 and a half points. So the Hogs are laying 19 and a half. You taking the favor or are you taking the points? I'm laying those points with Arkansas. I love what they have in the secondary. They can turn the ball over. Obviously, this game is going to be about can they stop the run with Rice. I think they can do so. I love what I've seen uh, up front this year, despite losing some guys to the NFL. And offensively, this offense should be able to hit the ground running again. You have K.J. Jefferson. You have Treylon Burks. Good running back in the backfield. This should be a really good offense. So I don't think Rice has enough right now to contend. Love it. All right. How about uh, your 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 next game that you want to discuss is one of the games uh, that I'll be watching next week because I'll be doing the Army Western Kentucky game the following week. But Army starts on the road, which I feel like is rare for them. Uh, the Black Knights take on Georgia State, and you like safeties for both teams. For Army, Cedric Cunningham, I believe, is on the Senior Bowl watch list. 
Yeah, he is. And, and rightfully so. He's a good player, good footwork, um, instinctive guy that can play a half a field really well. Uh, you see him drive on the football. He's good in the open field as far as tackling is concerned. Uh, so he does a lot of the things very well. And, and for Georgia Southern, Chris Moore, um, their safety is a former Virginia Cavalier. And this is someone that played really well last season. When I watched them against the Cajuns last year, I just noticed as he was flying up in the alley, just not just making tackles, like making sticks, you know, so you don't go anywhere. They use him a lot around the line of scrimmage. Uh, he plays on all special teams. So he's someone that you'll see the NFL start to really like because of his versatility, but also he's a really good uh, run defender. Um, and I think he's going to play out well in this ball game against Army. They're going to need Chris Moore to have a Chris Moore like day. You know, um, it's interesting. I actually think the best prospect for Army, because, and I, I actually told Jim Nagy at the Senior Bowl this, because um, I know Cedric Cunningham's on the watch list. They got two other guys on defense that are worth at least knowing about. Eric Smith, uh, linebacker number 53, this will be his third year starting. And the two guys he started next to the last two years are both in the NFL right now. Two years ago, as a sophomore, he started next to Cole Christensen who was up and down off practice squad and roster for the Chargers last year. And then last year, they put in John Radigan, who had never played before. And Radigan had an unbelievable year, and he's with the Seahawks right now. So Eric Smith started over Radigan the year before that, and they think he's just as good as Christensen and Radigan. So Eric Smith at linebacker, and my dude is uh, their D-tackle, Nolan Cockrell. I mean, he is – you know, last name Cockrell, he is cock strong. I mean, he is, I mean, he, and he is powerful, explosive. It reminds me of like a, um, like a Justin Bannon, if you remember him, a teammate mm -hmm. of mine, uh, Mike DeVito. Right. You know, like, I think he's like 6'3, 300, moves pretty well, really good technique, really good at the point of attack. He made a bunch of plays for Army last year in his first year starting. I can't wait to call, I believe, six of his games this year. Um, all right. In this game, Emory, Georgia State is laying three. Georgia State is favored. Who do you like in this one? Listen, if you want to play an option team, the best time to do it is week one uh, because you had all spring and all summer to prepare for, for the option. And when you look at Georgia State, they're a sleeper team in the Sun Belt. Love the quarterback play quietly they can run the football their quarterback is fearless he can throw the football deep down the field and defensively despite losing a linebacker or two it's a really good football team we talked about chris moore i like georgia state in this game so i'm gonna lay those points with georgia State. you know i'm all army all the time when they're playing a, an opponent but week one especially with a good team like georgia state i'm gonna take the panthers in this one so it's an excellent point about playing an option team week one. I mean, it really is. There, there's no question about it because every team the Army plays after this, they won't have the same amount of time to prepare for it. Although a lot of them will devote like a day or two in spring ball and a day or two in camp just so that it's not totally new for their guys starting mm -hmm. next week, you know, when they, when they get ready for them. All right, let's keep it moving. And before we get to LSU and UCLA – I want to make sure everybody knows the best way by far to find somebody for your job that you need right now. It's LinkedIn jobs. We all know it is hard to hire people always, but especially right now. Thankfully, LinkedIn's pretty smart. They got everybody, 750 million people. You just create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs. And then you use the simple tools on LinkedIn Jobs to quickly filter and prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates worth interviewing faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn, especially the young people? Young people are all over LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash draft. That's linkedin.com slash draft to post your job for free terms and conditions apply all right next game 
LSU, UCLA, UCLA with the big win over Hawaii. I was disappointed by Hawaii. I, I thought Hawaii would be better than that. That I thought that game would be somewhat competitive. Um, <laughs> that was a bummer. Uh, so LSU, UCLA, LSU is laying three and a half points. Who should we be watching on LSU, Emery? I talk about him a lot, man, because he was so impressive in his debut last year against Mississippi State, and that's Allie Gay, the defensive end. Heavy-handed, you know, George Foreman-like strength, Sean Jones-like hands. He puts those mitts on you. He's controlling line of scrimmage. So I'm excited to see how he does this year. And He's going to get an opportunity to be a pass rusher against UCLA. I know UCLA ran all over the islands of Hawaii last week. You know, it seemed like they just didn't even bother tackling Charbonnet, who was fantastic with this footwork but that's going to be a different challenge this week against lsu and i do feel as though they're going to put dtr uh you know the quarterback for ucla uh, in a position where he's going to have to throw more uh, dorian thompson robinson so that opens up the door for ali gay to really get after the quarterback so i'm excited to see how he matches up against a very solid uh, offensive line at ucla so ali gay didn't there used to be a tv show or something like ali g ali g right 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 uh the the rapper <laughs> That's uh, Borat. It, yeah, it was, yeah, exactly. I want to say I thought it, it was um, he had the little scully on the little, the little yes, color. yes, with the glasses. Ali G, like Bor <laughs> the same guy as Borat. I don't know. Isn't that amazing? That's really says something about that actor. I can't even think of his name, but I know him as Ali That's Gay awesome. or, um, you know, Borat, and then Sasha um, Baron Cohen, gentlemen. Sasha Baron yes. Cohen, Brian. There you go, Sasha Baron Cohen. He was also in uh, Talladega Nights. Mm -hmm. He was the French Perrier uh, NASCAR <laughs> driver in, uh, in Talladega Nights. All right. So you talked about Ali Gay, Ali G. Uh, what about UCLA? I like their safety, man. And, and you know, he's someone that's on the Senior Bowl watch list and Quentin Lake. And, and for me, you know, it's about making the plays that are there to be made. And I like how he's not afraid to go up and make plays on the ball no matter who's the target, whether it's a big receiver or a receiver that has a step or a big tight end, he's trying to go up and challenge the ball. Um, and and has, done, has done a good job uh, throughout the course of his career. He's a solid player, someone that's going to find himself on the NFL roster for a long time. Okay, with the spread being LSU laying three and a half, what are you thinking on this one? You know, it's interesting because LSU is now practicing in Houston all week, you know, dealing with – the storm and everything like that. Uh, so, you know, they'll leave from Houston to go out to L.A. UCLA has experience already playing in the game. I'm worried about LSU's psyche for this one. So I do like UCLA. So I'm taking UCLA in the points. Uh, that is a really good point. Really good point. Uh, because... First of all, they have a game under their belt, so you get a lot of those first game jitters out. Secondly, you know, the LSU guys are going to be thinking about their families. They're, they're kind of out of whack. That's uh, that's an interesting point. Emory. And they got really. quarterback questions going into this season. Because their starting quarterback, Max Johnson, is hurt, who was supposed to be the starter. So, you know, there's some – I'm sorry, uh, what's the kid um, – that was there last year uh, that ended up getting benched. Brennan. Um, Brennan is, is hurt. So, you know, there's some, there's, there's a lot of questions about LSU offensively heading into this ball game with UCLA. Is this a bad matchup to me on paper? Let's get to uh, the next game. This is an interesting one. Kent state and Texas A&M. Kent State has a very efficient offense and a very efficient quarterback in Dustin Crum. He put up – I mean, as a team, they put up ridiculous numbers last year. Uh, but they're going against a Texas A&M team that is absolutely loaded. I mean, Jimbo Fisher, I give him credit, man. He can recruit. I don't know how or what he does, but he gets players to wherever he is to come there. Let's start, though, with Kent State. And their quarterback, Dustin Crum. He's dual threat. Someone is going to hurt you on, on the ground and also has improved as a passer. You saw last spring, I'm sorry, last last fall, the passing game 
was phenomenal for him and because that was a huge question mark in 2019. He was more one-dimensional. He was more like Tebow in a sense that the, it was a long wind-up. It was you know not as consistent. Um, yeah, he could string together a couple of good throws, but mainly on the ground he was killing teams. Then last year, he tightened up that 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 stroke. You know, the passes were consistent, and now he became the ultimate dual threat. And that's to your point, they put up a boatload of points. And I, I do feel like their defense with all the returning starters they got will get better. And they're facing the Texas AM team. Uh, we're gonna talk about the prospect in a second, Michael Clemens, who's suspended indefinitely. And that's a huge part to their defensive line. He's an edge rusher, long, can play across the board, but now he's not going to be there. So you wonder how that defensive line, I know they're going to have another guy up, but you want your starters out there when you're facing a, a, an offense that's not afraid to come downhill and they're coming in with all of the confidence of a team that's looking to win the MAC this year. So – I did the Kent State UB game last year where Jarrett Patterson should have broken both records. Uh, it still bothers me, uh, but Lance Leipold didn't know, unfortunately, so it is what it is. Um, but I had done that game uh, a year ago, and Dustin Crum, it's interesting. He's not fast, but he's fast enough. Like, as a runner, you're not like – Everything he does, you're not looking at him physically and being like, wow, I really like he th the way he throws the ball. He really looks good throwing it, or he really looks good as a runner. But he gets yards running, and he gets the ball where he needs to throwing. Like He doesn't have a big arm. He doesn't look great throwing it. He's not that fast. Doesn't look great running. But he's effective doing both. It's really – like I can see why he didn't have any other offers because he's just not – physically impressive, physically imposing. He's just very, very consistent and efficient. As for AM not having Michael Clemens, I didn't even realize that. I mean, they still have uh, DeMarvin Leal on the other side, who's an absolute stud. Um, but uh, that's interesting about Clemens. On, on the DraftKings app, uh, where, by the way, you should always use code Ross, always, Texas A&M is laying 29 and a half points. It's a lot of points, Emory. And I know that they're a lot more talented than Kent State, but that's still a lot of points. Which way are you going? That's a lot of points when you don't have one of your star edge rushers and you're breaking in a new starting quarterback. Um, but you do have – and you re you're placing some parts up front, you know, along the offensive line. Now, granted, they have guys that got a lot of reps, but you lose three starters to the NFL, breaking in the new quarterback – do have Isaiah Spiller. You have Aeneas Smith. Uh, so I like Texas A&M to win the game. However, I'm going to take uh, Kent State in the points here, you know, because you said 29 and a half points is a lot. I know that's a very talented team, but Kent State is going to give them all they can handle in the first half before talent starts to take over uh, in the second half. I don't think they'll win by 30, uh, but they'll win this game probably with like 21, 24 points maybe. Um, and I, it doesn't doesn't uh, Crum remind you a lot of, of Colin Klein, who was with Kansas State? Yes. You, you can't. Yes, you, that's a great going, comparison. Like, why is this dude successful? You know, but it's just successful, and it has to frustrate you as a defense. That is a great comparison. That is who he reminds me of. Uh, that's a terrific point. And it's so funny you say 21 or 24 points, because what I was going to say is, I pitched this game being like 45-24, something like that. I don't think Kent State's going to have a great chance of slowing down A&M's run game. Mm -hmm. I think they'll get run over. But on some of them, they're getting run over. It shortens the game because the clock keeps moving. And I think Kent State will be able to score some points with the way they run their offense. Mm -hmm. So I'll go 45-24 A&M. So I'm with you. I like Kent State getting the 29 and a half points. Finally, uh, let's talk BYU and Arizona. Yeah. BYU uh, has a quarterback. I didn't know much about this guy. Nobody does because of what Zach Wilson did last year. But Zach Wilson was pretty good. So what, what's Jaron Hall going to do for him? A lot, man. And here's the thing. You, I, I tweeted out back in March. Um, or maybe it was it was March or May. It was I know it began with an M. And I said, if Jaron Hall is out there for the full season, 
he's going to put up Zach Wilson like numbers having Zach Wilson like impact because he's also a plus one in the run game like Wilson was. Wilson was more of a scrambler and Hall can definitely take off and run. He was a starter before he got hurt um, and Wilson took over after he was coming off of an injury. So I don't know what it is about BYU quarterbacks and injuries, but you know they tend to, to get banged up out there and Hall has a better deep ball than Zach Wilson. Wilson has good velocity, but a lot of his deep passes were hanging up in the air and they turned into 50-50 balls. Hall is putting that ball out in front and guys are running underneath it. And he has good rapport with Romney out there at receiver. They have Algeria at running back. So when you add a plus one in Hall, if he can stay healthy, this is another dynamic talent that could go the Zach Wilson route that one year of exploding and then jump into the NFL. Meanwhile, Arizona has an edge defender uh, that you like in Jalen Harris as Jed Fish takes over as coach there. His dad played on those uh, Operation Desert Swarm defenses out there in Arizona, too. Um, you remember how Joe Tafoya and all those guys and, you know, Brewski and, and those dudes out there just balling for uh, in an eight man front out there <laughs> with uh, Arizona. But this dude here is he's 6'5, he's 260, he's twitched up. You know, he, so he's he's explosive he, and chasing a way run, the run away, um, and chasing a quarterback and collapsing. And he got better every year. Now, last year, they were only limited to four games. Uh, so you feel, feel as though a full season for Arizona, he's going to be a prominent player up front because he has all the physical tools. And I think he'll put it all together this year uh, for the Wildcats. And he's on the senior bowl watch list, and rightfully so, because physically and athletically, he's checking boxes left and right. And now you just want to see the produ productivity jump and uh, this year, like it was trending, but before we had that weird 2020 season. So BYU favored by 12 points over a Pac-12 team. Obviously, Arizona has not been good recently. Uh, what do you think about that? BYU looking at the DraftKings app. Actually, it's 12 and a half now. BYU's up to 12 and a half. So that means some money uh, was coming in on BYU on DraftKings. They're now favored by 12 and a half. What do you like there? I like BYU, man. Again, I'm all in on, on Jaron Hall. The offensive line, yes, they lose three guys to the NFL, but they still have Tyler Algieri at running back. He's a good player. They got good receivers. And defensively, I think they're uh, going to be a little bit better than they were last year. They were solid you know, on defense because they had those pro players. But Arizona's offense, I'm, you know, I, I still have to take that wait-and-see approach. I know defensively they'll be game, but BYU is going to keep – hammering them with their offense and hall is going to have a big game a debut game so to speak against the wildcats i love it um i love we get the five games get to the best players in the games give you the bets against the spread awesome we'll do this every week if you have questions about specific prospects and games hit me up ross at ross tucker.com follow emory on social at fball game plan or football game plan on YouTube. And then, of course, you can check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL if you want to watch the show on YouTube. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. And we are done. The keg is kicked. We're all tapped out. Thanks for listening to the College Draft Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, Even Money, and The Business of Sports. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.